Winter, actually fall is coming to the northern hemisphere, but winter will be here soon. And with the change of the season, with the fall and winter, we will be getting less and less of a daylight. There is one internal home assistant integration that can help you compensate for the loss of the standard sunlight during the winter days or fall days. Today we'll be talking about the internal home assistant circadian light integration called FLUX. According to the scientists, although I myself have never ever read anything like that in any scientific paper, the humans need a light changes, both in terms of the temperature and also in terms of the light intensity. So there are a couple of integrations for home assistant that allow you to follow the daily biological rhythm of the sun and the connection with the human heritage of living under the sun. Some of you may have noticed that I have been slowly changing lights from the cold white to warm white light. This is the same thing that happens with our sun during the day. We have morning sun, noon sun, afternoon sun, evening sun and no sun at all. Why is the light important? Actually light helps us humans concentrate and focus on various tasks. Some people are saying that while we are working on something, concentrating on our task, we should have more of a cold white light in the room where we are working and presumably because of that most of the office buildings have really cold white lights. While on the other hand, while we are at home watching TV, reading book, more warmer light should be used. There have been a couple of videos from some other creators that have shown you how to integrate HACS components such as the adaptive lighting or circadian lights, but there is internal home assistant integration that is here for all of you that either do not want to use HACS because of possible security issues or simply prefer everything that is internal than external to home assistant. There is a big difference between the flux circadian lights and adaptive lighting. Adaptive lighting I think is the latest iteration of the circadian lights and it has more features or abilities to change some things that circadian light doesn't have. Same goes for the difference between the flux and the circadian lights. Flux is very minimalistic or basic circadian lights integration, so there are a lot of things that you will not be able to do with the flux. But during the last week or so, while I was testing circadian lights or flux lights in Home Assistant, I think that I found a way on how to compensate on those things. So let's look at what you need to do to install circadian lights in your Home Assistant integration. In the switch section of the configuration YAML file, or if you are using separate YAML file for the switches, in that file you have to add following. Mandatory fields are platform flux, which is of course needed to start the integration itself. Then you may want to add a name because it will later on help you identify if you have different flux integrations. The next section called lights is mandatory and here you have to specify what lights will be activated or used by this flux integration. Ok, let's talk about lights. There are different types of lights, and I'm not talking about manufacturers such as, for example, IKEA, Philips, Gove, etc. I'm talking here about the differences between the lights that they emit. There are lights that always have constant color temperature, and you can only change the brightness. This flux integration probably can be used with it to control the brightness automatically, but it's not for those types of bulbs. This one is for either the cold to warm lights light bulbs or to light bulbs that have RGB lights, RGBW, RGBWC, etc. So the lights that can change color. Because the circadian lights or the flux integration needs to be able to emulate the outdoor sun from the cold white to the warm light. But as I said, not all light bulbs are the same. 
For example, let's look at the lights I'm using here. These are the standing TV corner and entrance lights. As you can see, corner and entrance lights, they offer the ability to change brightness and color temperature. And it's not the same as, for example, this bulb here, which is a Zeta tabletop, because this one allows you to change brightness and the color itself. This bulb doesn't know what the warm white, cold white or normal white is. This bulb is emulating it via the change of the color. This is very important because the integration needs to know what type of light bulb you are using. Because of that, we have different mode. We have Miret or Myret, and we also have mode RGB. For the WLED strips that I'm using in my apartment, and for this color LED from IKEA, I'm using mode RGB. For the typical warm white, cold white light bulbs from IKEA, I'm using mode Myret. This mode field is mandatory. And if you, for example, don't succeed at first with the Myret or RGB, try the XY for those types of lights. Next fields are not mandatory, but you may want to specify them. First is the start time which should be 7 a.m. according to the default settings. The next one is stop time. And then we have three temperature or light temperature values. This is start color temperature. That is the most cold white your lights support. Then we have sunset color temperature. This is the light that we want to have internal in our home when the sun sets. And the third one is stop color temperature. That is the last or probably the warmest light that we want to have just before going to bed. Depending on the light bulbs you are using, you may want to change those values here. And also depending on the time you go to bed, you may also play with this stop time value. For me, usually at 11.30 p.m., all of the lights except the living room lights are slowly dimmed and at midnight they are turned off. So that's why I have this stop time at 11 o'clock so that the lights can stabilize. There are two additional fields which are not mandatory but you can also play with. For the purpose of the recording of this video, I've set them to two and three. First one is the transition. This is value that tells the system how long does the transition from one value to the other value last. The shorter the transition time, the faster it will change the values. For example, default value here is 30 seconds. And the second value that you can specify but don't have to because there is a default value of 30 seconds is interval. This tells system how often to update the values. For example, in this case, every 30 seconds, system will tell the light bulbs to do transition to new values. Just try to have this second value higher or same as the transition value, so that those two don't overlap. And this is more or less everything that is needed to set up the flux. But there are some additional fields that can help you tweak out your system and you may want to use them on a specific group of lights on or on a specific light. And yes, you can create as many of these flux integrations for as many lights as you want. And there may be a good reason on why you want to create multiple switches or multiple flux integrations, because we will be talking about that a little bit later on. So let's talk about those two non-mandatory fields. Brightness, this one allows you to specify the fixed value for the brightness. If you do not specify the brightness value, as I've mentioned, the brightness will also automatically change. And during my testing around 10 p.m., brightness was around 50%. And do you see the catch here? Well, the catch itself is that if you do not specify the fixed value or the next configuration parameter that we will be talking about in a second, the brightness will constantly change. So you may set the brightness at 100%. In the next interval, during the transition time, it will be changed to the value that system thinks the brightness should be at that specific moment. Yeah, 
it will be constant war between you setting the brightness to, for example, 100% and the system kicking it back to 50%. That's why, you, for example, you can specify here the fixed value and the light brightness will always be that 200, which also is not something that you may wish to do. But there is also one additional parameter that can further help you with the brightness control. This one is called Disable Brightness Adjust Default value is false, but you can specify True. This Disable Brightness Adjust option, if you set it to True, is even better than the brightness. In the case that you've specified brightness, the system will always keep the brightness at 200 out of 255, which is the maximum value. In case that you specify disable brightness adjust, what the system will do is it will ignore the brightness value. So while the color temperature changes, you still will be able to set to whatever brightness you want that light at a specific moment in time. And yes, I've learned that the hard way. My kid was trying to do the homework and the lights were constantly dimming. This is actually all you have to do to configure this flux integration. As I mentioned, just be careful to select the correct mode. It's either MyRed, RGB or XY, depending on the type of the light bulb that you are using. And of course, the next step is to go to Developer Tools, check configuration and restart your system. After you have restarted your Home Assistant, you should have a new switch or switches, depending on how many flux integration you have created in your system. In this, this is my recording setup, I have five switches, while on my main setup I have six, so one additional because of the one additional light I've added there. While you may try and play with the only one switch and add all lights in that one specific switch, you may have some reasons to separate them because of the ability to change or fix the brightness level at a certain value. Let's look at the lights themselves. If we turn the lights on, you may see that some of the lights will immediately change the brightness and the temperature depending, of course, on the interval and the transition times, such as this one here. It is currently changing the temperature value, it needs to reach 37% and brightness needs to be at 59%, same as the other lights. This is that transition time for the, each of the lights or switches. No matter what was the color temperature and the brightness of the light bulb when you turn it off, when you turn it on, it will try to calculate at what value it needs to be at that exact moment, and it will start slowly to transition to that one. But let's look at that problem that I mentioned you with the brightness, but also the color. If we, for example, try to force and change the light bulb to blue, it will very soon, slowly or very fast, try to transition to the current level it needs to be. For example, this one will slowly transition to the value here. As you can see, the color is slowly moving to the color it should be at this exact right moment. Same thing goes for the brightness. As I've previously mentioned, be careful what lights you add to the flux integration or how you configure flux integration, because if you want to change the brightness of one specific light and that one doesn't have either fixed value or disabled change of brightness, it will, yes of course, start slowly to change to the value it wants to be as soon as the interval kicks in. Flux integration in Home Assistant is very simple integration. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of this HACS circadian light integration but it can be sufficient for most uses. If we look at Wiki, you will see that there are a lot of things that you can do with the circadian light that you cannot do with the flux integration. And even circadian lights has some limitations that adaptive lighting doesn't have. The scale looks like this. 
flux integration, circadian lights and then adaptive lightning. Each has its own pluses, but it also has its own negative side. Adaptive lighting, for example, can be too overwhelming to configure, and it can create too many of additional devices or entities that you will not have issues with with the flux integration. But adaptive lighting, for example, has something that flux doesn't have, and that's the ability to keep currently changed, manually changed brightness level. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video, and if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give me a like. And I really want to thank all those wonderful people that have become my YouTube channel members and that have been supporting me for a long, long, long time. Thank you all for all of your support. But also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support this channel and what I'm doing here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member. But even if you do not become a YouTube channel member, I still really appreciate your time and support. And while we are here, don't forget to check out my merchandise store. I hope that you will find something interesting there. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.